and it's lower the rear wheel. I'm gonna try to get with my hand on this here. See that? You push out with your finger if you got all the tension off everything. Same with the bottom, see? So you don't have to pound those out. Have a jack holding it up at the right height. take the hot start off from up here and I'm going to hold the cable off because it's really hard to get it on when it's on the carburetor but you can do this in like five seconds and save yourself a ton of time. Notice this valve covers off because all these have tight valves. So we went ahead and um, checked the valve adjustment. We're waiting for an O-ring for the top cover before we put it back on. But all these old Hondas, older Hondas, you have to check the valves. They all have tight valves. Don't do a carb clean without pulling the valve cover real quick and at least making sure you have clearance on every valve. This one did, so we don't have to do anything. And uh, we'll be blowing that out and putting a new O-ring on there in a minute. When you remove the shock, it just you get so much more access to the cables and it's worth it. The time invested to remove the shock, you make up by not struggling with the cables. Now, the KTMs and the Yamahas, you don't have to do all that always, at all. Mm -hmm. Just these Honda ones usually. Put a dot on those. Why? So that I always know which one's on the top. Oh. You don't get confused then, because you will. And you put them backwards a bunch of times. It's like, oh. So I mark it. time to test where your screw was but we're going to look at our jetting and we had it out about a turn That will be soda blasting all that. You want to get everything off the float pole that you can. All screws out of it, all o rings out of it. Just have just your float pole. Don't take out the brass jet, that can stay in there. We're going to all test it to be clean later. And everything I'm going to clean, I'm going to keep aside. Clean well. Off. And these little guys just break usually when you hit them. If they're old, then you hit them with something pointy. Let's break right off there. Discard everything you're not going to use. Keep your pile so you know what you're doing. And there should be one more little one on the bottom of this. And it's not there. It should be. Oh, it's missing. Huh? This one too comes off. We'll be checking this diaphragm later. Looks like it's not messed up at all. It 
show you how to disassemble it, take the, take the float out. This car, the needle and seat comes out. Most of them don't. The older ones, you'll see they do come out. So uh, we're gonna replace it, but I'll show you how to get it out of there easy. They're tricky to get out. For me, I made a little tool that's plugged. See how I just filled it with solder? And I plugged it, and it's got the O-ring, so I can stick this in here and block that hole. And I can use air to take the uh, take that thing out and all nice. So let's give it a try and see if it works. Find it if you don't do it this way. And it might not come out, we might have to destroy it. Came right out. No problem. We'll be putting a new one. We can refurbish them. I have the stuff to do it, but I think today we're just gonna put a brand new one and be done with that guy. We know we're gonna put a new needle. So we're looking good. I think we're gonna replace is over there. Jets are different, but you can't put them in the wrong place because one's long. They look the same, but when they come out, you'll see that they're not the same. One's small and one's long, so you can't mix them up. Really. Now we have to figure out if we're going to do the mid body on the, or the mid body on these. They weren't available before, but they are now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do it for this guy. We're going to pop apart the mid body, clean it really well and we're going to replace the O-ring. There's four different ones available, so make sure that you double check that you have the right O-ring for your carb. You don't want to split this if you can't get the O-ring. It would be really devastating. You'd have a carb no good. So on this one, it says on the front that it's an O2 CRF450. It's not that one. Uh, it's not that one. It's not this one. It's not this one. I missed it. I think it's O2 CRF 450. There it is. O2 and O6 through O6 CRF 450R. So this is the right kit for this one. They have several part numbers. You see the part number down here. There's a part number up here. And there's a part number over here. So they use different companies use different part numbers to, to uh, associate it. So we're gonna pull, we don't even know how bad that is, but we're gonna pull it apart and see if it needed to be done or not. And uh, the O-ring shouldn't last more than 10 years, and this is an O2. It's never been done because we still see the paint inside the screws here, and they give you new screws in the kit. So we know this one's never had the O-ring done in O2 to 2021. That's almost 20 years for an O-ring to have to um, deal with fuel, going across it or buy it. Usually they won't make it. So let's show you how to get these, these screws, which can be really difficult out. I've got a way I do it, so I'll show you guys right now. So these screws we're gonna take out are two and a half millimeter. I bought a special hobby shop, two and a half millimeter that's real long, and I try to do it uh, without removing the paint. If you don't have a tool like this, you gotta get the paint out of those. Because if you can't get a good hit on them, they're too tight to come out. Be very careful. If you strip them, you can grind them off there, but you don't want to if you don't have to. It's always better to do it easiest the first time. Pound it in to try to get the paint out of it. 
and I'm lightly cracking it loose without stripping it because they strip real easy. I'm going to turn the carb around to the other side. Two screws so you can just get rid of the screws, pull them out, and then crack the bottom. And it'll come off there and you get a look at it. And this one's not very bad, as you can see. We probably could have left it, but whatever, we're going to do it anyway. Usually they're all corroded and you can see where uh, it's been leaking across, but this one was in really good shape. So, but we're gonna go ahead and do it real quick. We'll show you how to clean this properly. Getting them warm, these old O-rings, it seems to get them off without leaving a bunch of O-ring residue. So you get them at a little bit of a warm temperature and they'll peel off easily. versus scraping around that thing for a long time, which I'm doing now, right? It's only well, even though it's not really dirty. There's another O-ring that's hidden in there. Pull that one off real quick. Is this other one? And let's see how that one looks. That one's up in here. And that one is also not that bad. When they're bad, they're all uh, swollen and then out of their groove and some missing pieces. So this one would have been okay, but as a precautionary, we're gonna do it anyway, just to know it's perfect. And uh, we'll clean some of this and we'll come back and show you how we cleaned it and stuff. You want to uh, get this wet with some kind of contact cleaner and go around the edges until you remove all the little rubber contact cement that Honda put on there or Yamaha or whoever. Key in when the carburetor was built. You'll see it goofing up. All of it has to come apart. I'm going to show you how to restore the seat because the seat doesn't come out of the newer models. It stays in this float bowl. So I'm gonna show you how to restore it as if it's still inside this float bowl. Um, okay, so if you have one uh, pressed in your float bowl, that, float bowl that does not come out, you want to do the procedure I'm going to do right now on the one that does come out. Okay, so this is to restore your seat of your needle and seat in your stock OEM key in FCR MX float bowl. You'll see we have these little Q-tips covered in uh, very fine steel wool. Use the finest one, extra fine, extra, extra fine that you can get. Okay, don't use rough steel wool to do this. I don't like using lapping compounds because it seems to stay in the metal. So the best way I've seen to do it is to shove a little tiny piece of steel wool in there lightly. Don't gouge the thing. Okay, and then take your drill motor. I want to start out with a new Q-tip to show you guys. Take your Q-tip, tear off a little piece of your fine steel wool, wrap it on your Q-tip. This will catch the piece that's in there. Okay, and snug it up. There you go, right there, it's basically ready. Okay, if it breaks and if the piece sticks in there, which this one did, I'm going to blow it out. But you can see how it shined the inside of that seat up. Can you see that? That's clean. That's all you want is spotless clean. We'll clean the outside up a little bit too, but the inside of that is ready to use now. Simple Q-tip with some extra fine steel wool. I'll reinstall the screen that goes on the very bottom. 
Now for these, I have extra O-rings. I'll get my kit. I know which ones I use. So I'll get one ahead of time and just put it on there. So they should come in a carb kit, This all this stuff, but if it doesn't, you can restore it. And there it is, clean inside, new O-ring on there. I could reuse that one, no problem if I had to. Okay. Put a light, very light coating of dielectric grease on all the new O-rings. No excess though, very, very light. That'll help them stick when you're going to put them back in. Or once you get this O-ring on, it only goes on one way. There's a little hole right there in the front of that. It goes to that hole in the front of that one. Be very careful not to mess up your O-ring like I just did. Make sure it stays in the hole. Set it on there. And don't move it while you put the new O-ring. Don't tighten the screws until they're both in there. Sometimes I use a magnet to stick them in. You can get them in the hole and actually start them with a magnet. They only get so tight and they'll just strip the head out. So just get them real snug. Make sure you have Loctite on them. A little blue, a little tiny bit. And that's it, that's as tight as they get. You can tell when you did it right because a little miniature piece of black O-ring sticks out of that little hole right there. So you kind of know it's in place and it's flat. If it, the O-ring had moved, it wouldn't be flat like it is. I have little tiny O-rings, some of these carburetors. Some don't have these, but some do. So you have to put dielectric grease on them and set them in these little tiny holes. If you can get a close up of that there, Richie. They sit on there, you want them to stay. So you want to put some safe dielectric that'll hold them there. And they can't move when you assemble this thing. Boom. See how they're just lined up on the centers right there? we've done the new o-rings on our base part you have the round you have the square ones and you have the o-ring I've got it a little dielectric on it and I've got it just sitting right in its little slot perfect and you want it just to stay there and now we're gonna put this thing together you get one shot kind of to put these together smoothly I like to use a tool to hold it once I get it together so let's do that real quick and show you Okay, get your rod lined up, this guy, and just quickly and easily put it together, hold it there, get your tool, and look at that, you can hold it together while you put the new screws in right now on the bike. They're gonna put it in here. Uh, put a screw in. Screw. I'm not gonna bottom it out yet. Lightly. Put one in the back side too. Bracket I have on here to hold it. Cool. You want to see it bottom out like that. It's telling you your O-ring's in there flat. And at this point, I can move, move this thing. So, get all your screws in the bottom here. And then, right. Once you get them all in, you can torque them down real tight. Okay, that's the mid-body O-ring, it's been replaced perfectly. We always try to replace the uh, cap once it gets bent like that. You can see how it's uh, it's been over-tightened a bunch and it's bent. 
so we'll be putting a brand new lower cap on it. It's going to have to replace these. The O-rings always go bad too. So well, we're going to reassemble the carburetor now. Start with the flow pole. This one, if you put some dielectric on it, it's going to stay in its little hole right here. That's what you want. You want that one just to sit in there and not fall out when you turn this upside down, okay? And then you want to look at your diaphragm. I can tell this one's good. When they're bad, they're all torn up or there's a hole in them. So I can tell that one looks pretty good. I'm going to blow it off real quick. And to assemble these, you uh, can't really do it wrong because it won't fit. But the reason why we pre-hold that rubber O-ring in is so that you can just set this on real easy. And the holes line up. It's pretty simple. test this float bowl after we get this together. We're going to test the float bowl itself to see if it's working properly with the accelerator pump so that we don't have to take it back apart later. So I'll show you how we do that. And, uh, get that together and then I'll show you how we fill it and check it. Now we're going to show how to test the float bowl after you got it all back together with the accelerator pump before you put this o-ring on the top with the bottom all together so it won't leak. Go ahead and fill it, okay? I've just got it sitting in a vise, barely. Barely have any tension holding it. It's just chilling there. I found a spoke that I cut that fits the same size as the hole right here, okay? And what we're gonna do is if it's gonna pump into the bike, it should pump here now. So that's all we're testing for is, does it, does it spurt out the accelerator pump? Many times you need to put your finger over it and block it first, build up pressure, then let go and watch it just squirt. If it's not doing that, it's not going to spray into the motorcycle. If it doesn't have pressure here, you're not going to have pressure anywhere else. So this is a nice test to see if you have pressure coming up your thing, up your, uh, up your accelerator pump. And you can see that one is spraying pretty good, isn't it? Ready to do the reassembly. Uh, first, you always want to put in the spigot for the fuel because if it knocks any chunks loose, you don't want your needle in there yet. So you always install this guy first with new O-rings and put your screw in there. Special screw. Doesn't have threads all the way. Should spin nice and turn nice and free and then after you do that you want to blow air through that so if there's any chunks in there that have broken loose for any reason you've got them out of that hole and then you can put your new uh, needle I mean your refurbished needle in I'm gonna go ahead and put a little tiny bit of WD on it just to make it slide in easy but you don't have to Screw holds that in place. Tight. Now we close them again and again and again. Make sure there's no more. This piece holds this piece in, so they have to go on at the same time. Okay, we've got the uh, needle and seat in, we've got the spigot for the fuel, we'll put the jets in. Always double check your jets, I'm putting a brand new pilot jet, it had a 45, I'm going to put a 45. We're going to tune this bike on part two and show you about the jets. So uh, 
you want to keep the jet in there that was in there most likely. The long hole gets the long jet. The short hole gets the short jet. They don't need to be super, super gnarly tight, just snug. Okay. Main jet can go in. And can't you put the mixer screw in yet because it goes in on this one after the float bowl. So that'll be last. Um, we can put the float on and we can test the float. So that's what we're going to do now is show you how to test this thing for leaks before you put it on. Install your needle and then set it in there and put your pin in there. If you didn't mess with the float, it shouldn't be off as far as having to readjust it. We're going to check this one and show you, okay? You basically want the float when it touches. This one's a little low. It would be a little bit better if it was right there. Angle just barely have a little bit of closure angle to it. So I'm going to change it a little bit. I'll be pushing the tab down. I've got it adjusted now. I've got it a little bit higher than it was right there. It's gonna shut off a little sooner. Um, it's gonna ensure this one doesn't leak and it's, it's about perfect right there. We're gonna test the float. We're going to put gasoline to the system upside down, okay? I've got the carb upside down and I'm gonna turn this fuel on over here and see if it leaks. No gas to come out until I lift up on the float. Now we'll lift up on the float and show you how it should come out of there. And when I let go, it should shut off again. Show you guys again. Working. This is showing you that you don't have any debris in there, that there's nothing keeping this needle and seat from touching and holding pressure right there, upside down. We've only got about a pound of pressure against it or two, but it's showing you it doesn't leak right there, okay? okay. Brass nozzle and make sure it's squirting. I'm gonna go right through this hole. As you can see, it's squirting really good. And when we put it back together, we're gonna test it and make sure it's still squirting, but you always wanna squirt through this little hole right here before you get it all the way back together and make sure that that's clear. Okay, the slide should have an M on it. 99% of them out there are an M. Make sure you have the right slide, which you probably do. And then this little guy can come off. You wanna make sure that O-ring is okay. If it's completely swollen, you wanna get rid of it. That one looks good, so we can keep it. And this guy goes hole down. Hole always goes to the bottom and it just fits in there perfect. And that's for the carb to suck air through that little slot right there. Remember I told you it goes letters towards you. So you wanna to go to put this in, you wanna have that towards you like that. And you wanna set it in here slowly. And as you get a little ways down, you can put your lever right on it. It'll just grab it. And then use your screw back in there. And you never took apart any of this slide mechanism or the uh, throttle position sensor. It just stays always. Make this screw real tight. You can lock tight if you have it. And then it should snap back. It'll be beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and install a new O-ring on the top here and finish this up and then we'll test the, uh, the squirting of it before we install it. Before we reinstall it, we're gonna test to make sure it doesn't leak and we're gonna test to make sure it squirts good. So spring, washer, miniature washer, 
It's a special washer. Can't use any one. It's a little tiny one for that size only. And the low ring sits on there. And I like to put them up from the bottom so nothing falls off. So straight up in here, nice and light. Try not to drop anything. And you want to bottom it out lightly and then turn it out about two to three turns. So you want to lightly bottom it, and then it's got a three showing. I'm going to go out three turns, two turns. So I'm going to go to the three, and go to the three again. Now we're going to tune this with the exhaust gas analyzer, so we're going to know where this needs to be. But for a good point, you want to put it two turns to three turns right there out. So I'm three turns out from bottom here to uh, put some gas to the carburetor and see if it leaks. Okay. Now this thing should leak when I turn it sideways, like that, and then it should stop when I come full up. I want to test it a couple times. Leaking, like you drop the bike, boom, you raise the bike up, it shouldn't leak. If it keeps dripping, you have an issue. It's not sealing. You can see how I'm lightly vibrating this and it's not dripping anymore. That means that needle and seat's not going to leak when it gets on the bike. If it's constantly dripping like that, you've got an issue. It's got to come back apart and you've got to figure out why. Okay, this one's sound. I'm leaking, I'm not leaking. Right. Now we're going to check the accelerator pump and make sure it's working good. And the way you do that is once it's full, you want to turn the slide, the throttle, and you can see it in there squirting. I mean, it squirts all the way across that bench. If you look, see that? Squirting all the way across. Now, we didn't change anything with this spring. We didn't wrap O-rings around this. You don't need to do any of that. Um, you just need to make sure everything's proper. And she's going to spray. Look at that. Okay, so this one works properly. It doesn't leak sitting here. And uh, it's ready to be installed. So we'll install it now and we'll show you how to tune it properly.